on in, you guys. It's day number 77 of my 365-day Jimmy Ice Bath Challenge. I've been going live every single day, most of the time right around 5 p.m. Eastern Time, every single day of 2022 this year, you guys. Why? Because I've been getting into an ice bath every single day. And yes, this is real big chunks of ice that I willingly and on purpose put my body into that bath every single day. Currently the temperature of this bath, let's take a look at what the temp is, 31.9 degrees Fahrenheit, so below freezing. And I'm about to wiggle my body right into there on purpose. No, I haven't lost my mind. So those of you that have been watching this journey, I've been getting in every single day Try to make it around 32 degrees. Most days it's between 32 and 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I go for five minutes. Sometimes I do little strange little tests. Yesterday I did five minutes. I got out for 15 and I did five more minutes. That was glorious. But today, you guys, I want to talk about a phenomenon. And we're having a really bad storm uh, coming through South Carolina. So you might hear a lot of wind. It's very windy out here today. Um... Yes, so you can see the trees blowing in the background. Very, very windy out here. But today, I want to talk about this phenomenon that has happened with my body temperature. So if you looked at my stories before you came on the live today, I posted two readings. One of them was at 90 minutes before the ice bath, and the second one was at 45 minutes before the ice bath. Both were officially in fever territory, uh, the second one was 99.9 .9 degrees Fahrenheit. So I want to talk about this because it's happening much, much more throughout the day. It's not just right before the ice bath now. So my theory that I've been positing that it's a Pavlovian response to knowing that I'm getting in an ice bath is having to be shifted a little bit because it's happening all over the place. So I want to talk about that here in a minute. First of all, first things first, let's get my body into this ice bath for five minutes. As you can see, it's got tons of big, beautiful chunks of ice in there. Oh, and this morning, I'll tell you when I get in there what I did this morning, but it has to do with the ice bath. I'll tell you that story in just a minute. Five minutes on the clock, and here we go. Okay, you guys, I am relaxed. I'm resting here on today's ice bath. So this morning, I did something I have not done yet during this ice bath challenge, and I did not go on camera for this. But this morning, I decided, you know what? Let me do a quick dip in the morning. So I was just chilling out over in my hot tub over there, and I thought, huh, let me, let me hop into the ice bath and it doesn't have to be a long session. I ended up doing 30 seconds. So I was in here for 15 seconds, then I dumped my head for 15 seconds, and then I got out. And even just that, you guys, even that little bit of an ice bath, I could feel the difference that, wow. 
And everybody's like, oh, it'll wake you up. And it's like, okay, it's more than that. Yes, it can do that. It can revitalize you, give you energy and blah, blah, blah. But even just if you're frazzled and you need to calm your nerves, getting in an ice bath will literally uh, chill you out. But I want to talk about what's happening to me when I'm not in the ice bath. Because this phenomenon where my body temp is literally going up to the point that it's in fever territory. Guys, this is the most fascinating finding that I've seen of this ice bath so far. I would not have predicted that one of the physical effects of this ice bath, doing it regularly, would be that my body temperature would rise when I'm outside of the ice bath. And I'm talking about every time of the day. So you guys know I have what's called biphasic sleeping, segmented sleeping. I've talked about it pretty openly where I sleep, I go to sleep, and I sleep for a few hours, usually about four or five hours. Then I'm up for a few hours, and then I go and lay back down for another couple of hours. And that's my sleep. And so in that in-between time, I'm sometimes testing my blood, uh, my uh, blood, my body temperature. And the other night, you guys, 100.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm like, I'm not sick. But the body is kind of doing things inside of it that's making that temperature go up. Now, we know that as brown fat accumulation starts to happen, as it's activated from these cold uh, ice baths, that that can be thermogenic. That can be one of the reasons why your body temp will go up. And, and it's kind of a cool phenomenon. I was likening it to like a Pavlovian response getting ready to get into the ice bath, but it's happening at all times of the day now. Now, it's not constant. I'll test it again about 30 minutes after getting a reading like that, and it'll be back down to like 98.8 or something. So it, there's things that are happening that's making it go up and down, and so it's pretty neat to watch it in real time. But would never have guessed that this would happen doing ice baths. All right, I'm going under the water. I can't get my ears to... A lot, a lot of ice in there today. Boom shakalaka. This is how you do cold therapy, guys. And yes, I am loving every minute of this. But, oh, this thermogenic effect. Oh, my goodness. Like, I knew about it. I knew, I knew about the processes that happen in the body when you make yourself cold on purpose. Little did I know just how profound they would be. Like, I didn't know that you would register basically a low-grade fever just from doing regular cold therapy. And look, I never got this, at least that I uh, could tell. I never had this happen when I just did cold showers. I never really had it happen doing ice in my bathtub. So cold showers would have been like 50s and 60s. Uh, ice in my bathtub would be 40s. This is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's something about this temperature for that duration of time that I do every single day that causes this warming up in my body. And I mean, I'm not freaked out about it, but I will tell you, let, let me tell you this. It feels like a fever in the eyes because my eyes start to burn. You know how when you get a fever, your eyes will, will kind of burn and maybe be a little red. I don't notice redness, but I definitely feel the burn I did, uh, just before getting in the ice bath and I saw that 99.9 .9 degrees Fahrenheit, I did kind of just kind of have a blah feeling, but I'm not sick. Like I literally get this way every single day and I, I'm not sick and yet I'm popping those temperatures. Now, for posterity's sake, let's see what it is right out of the ice bath. So I literally just got out of the ice bath one minute ago. Let's see what's happened in this body. You would predict that it would be colder. 
and it's 98.9 degrees. So that's dropped a full point from that 99.9 .9 degrees that it was just before I came on the air. All right, let's see who all's here today. Uh, Sean is here, Texas Livingston, uh, CSISK is here, Dan, Hank, Jen, Diana, Cariana, CC Guide Dogs, Eating Clean, Plastiquito, Sharon says, number 77, woo! Yes, 77 days. Today Today should be the lucky day of doing the ice bath. Jason's here, Vicky, Delan, Bulletproof, T1 Flyer, Gabby, Bulletproof says, Jimmy's on fire. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Carrie is here, Dancing Carnivore's here, Elisa, Eshin, Jessica, uh, BJ is here, Holly's here, Deborah, uh, Liliana, Bulletproof says, Jimmy looks red. I hope your brown fat doesn't catch you on fire. Hey, I, I actually am red. It's it's amazing um, when I kind of examine parts of my body, uh, the redness, and it's like, it's obvious this cold is having that impact on it. But yeah, I can rub my finger across my stomach and even across like my, oh yeah, across my feet. You can definitely see this redness uh, happening. I'm not worried about it. Uh, I know it's doing good stuff for me. Carol Ann is here. Fussell Training is here. Danielle's here. F. Fitchell, DeMarco. Danielle says, what changes have you been getting from this, Jimmy? Oh, girl. So many. I mean, for me, it's the mood calming effect of it that I really enjoy. Like if I'm, like I was saying when I was in the ice bath, if I'm frazzled, one of the best ways to kind of chill out, literally, is to chill out in an ice bath. And I've I've noticed that calming effect. Like right now, I am so zen. I am so like, <sighs> I can just feel the weight of the world lifted off of me because of the ice bath. Um, it's also improved my deep sleep pretty significantly so. I get very consistent uh, restorative sleep. Um, I am getting this warming effect, so I'm assuming that that's activating brown fat which I'm trying to tap into that white fat that's in my body. And so this is one of the ways uh, to do it. Um, I haven't quantified inflammation lowering, but I'm assuming that's happening. Uh, or same with blood sugar stabilizing, blood pressure. But um, I think the best effect of all is I feel good. I feel really good. And I'm able to do this. Like this is, this is hard. I know I make it look really easy in there, but it's really really hard to get into an ice bath. And so for me, the mental resilience that I built from this Danielle has been invaluable. I literally feel like I can take on anything now uh, in life because I've been able to take this thing on. And this is a very hard thing, but we, we have hard things happen in our life all the time and we need to train ourselves. And this is what I'm using the ice bath for training myself to do hard things in a controlled environment like getting in an ice bath so that when the crazy stuff actually hits i'm actually ready to take on those things that are truly hard so those are the changes that i've been seeing great question my keto life is here uh danielle says what the what wow Oh, about the body temperature going up yes demarco says shout out from chicago hello bud Mars is here, Heart and Soul's here, Classy Keto. I wonder if doing these ice baths every day that you are changing your normal core body temp. Maybe. I mean, that makes sense uh, on a lot of levels, Melissa. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it certainly could be doing that. And look, I mean, you, your body will adapt to whatever environment you put it in. So if you are regularly dipping your body in a cold uh, ice bath, makes sense that your body would try to adjust to that. Although the rest of the day, uh, it's relatively cool the rest of the day. Like it's it's in the 98s most of the time. It's just these anomalies. And in those moments when I get those higher temperatures, I so desperately wish there was a way I could determine what is the causal factor of why um, that I'm getting those little spikes. Like in the middle of the night, the one I had the other night, why did I pop a 100.6? And again, I'm not sick, but I, and I didn't even feel that one. I was just like, huh, what's my temperature? 100.6. Now we can always say it's just a device and maybe it's apt for error, 
but it happens on such a consistent basis now that I get those readings that I, I don't think it's I don't think it's the electronic that has failed. Holly says that your body temp caused you to have trouble falling asleep. No, 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 no. So when I, oh, let me back up on that one because I do have a caveat on that one. So great question. You guys are hitting it with the questions today. Keep them coming. So I usually, I'm cold right now. The body is doing all of its processes to warm me up. Okay, so I will have a spike up in fact, let's do a check-in while I'm talking about body temperature, and we'll see what my body temp is doing right now in this very moment. See, it's back to 99.4, so it's going back up. So it gets cold when it's in the ice bath, as you would expect. When you get out and you're just drip drying, your body's going to do all the processes to warm you up, so that's what's happening now. And then it's going to slowly work its way back down and lower the core body temperature. And that, when I try to go to sleep, is what helps me go to sleep. But two nights ago, I meant to t say this yesterday, two nights ago, I got into the bed and I had a cover and I, I cover up uh, in the bed, but I'm still cold. And actually the other night I covered up and I've got a, a, a light blanket. I don't have a heavy blanket on top of me, but a very light blanket. And I, I wasn't shivering but I was cold and I kept like trying to like bunch up and try to get real, real, you know, small or whatever. Still was super cold. I have like a pillow between my legs. I was cradling another one. I was desperately trying to get warmer. And again, I was not shivering, but it did impact my ability to go to sleep because I was, I was so chilly. I resisted the urge to turn on the, the heat. I did not, uh, could have very easily turned on the heat that night but uh, kept it off and uh, I did eventually go to sleep. So it did impact me in that way in my sleep. JoJo's here, BJ says five days into carnivore, currently on hour 22 of a 48 hour fast. Good job, that's amazing. Keep it up. Sugar Mountain is here, Heart and Soul says, what did I miss? Did you go in the ice bath back to back again? No, I did that yesterday. I change things up every day. I don't do the same thing. No, today I'm talking about body temperature and the changes that I've been seeing, most specifically the rises in body temperature, uh, both pre-getting into the ice bath and then at different times during the day. I'm, I'm hitting places like 99.9 .9 degrees, 100.4 degrees. The highest I got was 100.6 degrees in the middle of the night the other night. And so my theory that the body warming up was a Pavlovian response in anticipation of the ice bath doesn't seem to be totally true because it's happening at all periods of the day. Not constant, so I don't have a constant fever, but often enough that it's getting my attention. Let's just put it that way. I definitely want to try to talk to uh, an endocrinologist, somebody that kind of knows pathways as to why this would be happening, what could be the causal factors. I think uh, brown fat has something to do with it. Mrs. Green is here. Danielle says, feeling good matters more than anything else. Yes, you you know that as an educator yourself. And I've been teaching it in my work for many years. And getting to this place is a really cool place to be, Danielle, where you, you feel good in your own skin, even if other people judge you for that skin. Cadillac Lounge is here. DeMarco says, does it help with your mental disorders? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to diagnose you and say, oh, yes, if you have a mental disorder, get in there. But it can do nothing but calm you down. So anxiety, depression, again, I'm not diagnosing anything. But if you have those symptoms and, and those are things that you get overwhelmed and just the world right now is just in a weird place. So maybe sometimes it gets to you. Pop in a cold shower. Just put your head under the water and let that cold therapize you. And I promise you it will change your mood. Those of you that do cold showers, those of you that do ice baths like me, you know, you know, when you have those moments, that cold is going to bring you back and, and help you. So definitely an adjunct to whatever you're already doing, DeMarco. Carnivore runners here, Mr. DeGuy is here. Cariana says, so do you feel those temperature surges like a hot flash? Not like a hot flash. Like I said, well, I don't know what a hot flash is like because I am a dude, but I can imagine. Um, 
The only thing is the eyes. So I can feel when it's going like pretty close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, I can feel my eyes starting to burn ever so slightly. Um, and let's see what it's doing now. It was going up just a moment ago to 99.4 just a moment ago. So let's see what it's doing now. All right, starting to work its way back down, 98.8 degrees. Um, and at some point, it will get to below 98. So I want to say last night after I went off the air, I tested right about 45 minutes, maybe 60 minutes after. I don't remember exactly, but it was down to 97.1. So the body does do that cool down in the ice, warm up post ice, and then cool you down. And it's right about that time that I start to get sleepy. And it's that sleepiness of the lowering of the core body temperature that helps you sleep and sleep well at night. Marcus is here. Johanna is here. Heart and soul has a sweat emoji. <laughs> Sharon says, you're on fire. This boy is on fire. Karen's here. Sharon says, are you doing a walk and talk soon? Yes, Sunday. Uh, it's going to be beautiful on Sunday. Tomorrow is my um, farmer's market is going to be open. So I need to go there early so I can get the beef. I'm almost out of beef because they have been closed for the winter, except for once a month. And last month, they did not have any beef. So uh, she said, I'll have you some next month. So I'm going to go first thing when they open so I can buy them out. Usually, it's about 20 pounds worth of ground beef, grass-fed ground beef. So I will be doing that tomorrow at 11 a.m. But Sunday at 11 a.m., yes, I will be talking uh, in a walk and talk. Still trying to figure out the topic. I got a few things on tap. Uh Ways to live authentically is one idea. What was the other idea? Oh, um, I disagree with somebody on the internet, but I still like them. You know, something like that, where it's okay to have different opinions from other people. So let me mull over those two things. I got a few other ideas, but yes, walk and talk. Sunday, 11 a.m. I will definitely post something about it uh, on Saturday. DeMarco says, thanks, Jimmy. You're welcome. Ortiz is here. Bulletproof says, uh, Jimmy needs the fire extinguisher. So yeah, I've got one right up there. <laughs> yes, yes. May is here and Dan is here. So guys, day number 77. I've been at this ice bath thing every single day. What's funny is I've been doing this and you guys come on here. So many of you are here every day, 5 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for your faithfulness. Those of you watching the replay, you can come in for the fun. Come join and, and engage with me live. As you can see, I talk to people very openly on the air uh, and answer your questions. So come on over 5 p.m. Eastern time on Instagram at Living Low Carb Man. Go follow me over there um, and would love to have you um, in the live. A very high ceiling you have. Yes, I had this custom made. This is a uh, yeah custom made kind of log cabin feel. Yeah, I like my, this is this is affectionately called the man cave. I've got my main house over there. That's where I have the recording studio is over there. So if you watch any of my podcasts, I do them over at the house. I've got a recording studio with lights and everything. And then I've got my kitchen over there, my shower, and I wash my clothes over there. And I literally do everything else over here. Marcus says, uh, in as late as the 1980s, psych wards use cold baths as a calming intervention. It's, yes. Cold therapy improves acute psychosis, depression, and anxiety as well. Contrary to the movies, this was not to punish them. Yeah, yeah. I always hate it when I see people talk about using cold water to wake people up. And, yeah. I mean, I get it. It's shocking to the system and da-da-da, but... Yeah, there's a lot of negative uh, stereotypes of cold that we're gonna try to try to correct. Uh, Gala is here. May says, "Do you sit in ice water every day?" I can never do this. So May, yes, my dear, we get in there. We meaning me, myself, and I. Uh, we get into that ice bath of 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and I sit in it for five minutes a day. So you came in late. You missed the beginning. I actually was in the ice bath. So that's why I'm dripping wet, why my, why my head's wet. I dunked my head under at the end. So 
I love people that say they can never do this because I want to encourage people just like you. So thank you for being here today. I didn't start in an ice bath. I started three years ago in my shower. I was taking a, a hot shower like I always did. And I just thought, you know what? I wanna try getting into cooler and cooler temperatures. So I moved it down from hot to warm. And I got warm water and I did that for a period of a couple weeks. So I could breathe through and get through. Okay, that's not so bad. Then I just slowly worked it down. Did that for a little more. Worked it down some more. Did that a little more. And before I, before long, within a few months, I was on the coldest setting on the shower. And I'm able to keep my head under the water, which is important. You want all those nerves and everything in your in your brain and your head to get all that coolness on there. And I did that for like 15, 20 minutes to start. At one point, I was doing cold showers at the end of my bathing. I was doing cold showers for an hour, an hour, just because it felt so good letting it run all over my body. Now, the bad thing about a shower is you're not submerged, so you need some of that water tension that you get from a bath, from an ice bath. And then uh, you can only get it just so cold. So even on the coldest setting, it's in the 50s at, at best. Maybe during the winter, a little cooler, but for the most part in the 50s. And so what I, do, what I did next was, okay, that's too much to go in a cold shower for an hour and I still want more. So then I started going to buy 20 pound bags of ice from Sam's Club, dumping them in my bathtub, and then putting my legs in first and then wiggling my body down and trying to get every part of my body, including the vagus nerve, beneath the water. Um, and I did that for about a year, sporadically. That was very highly inconvenient, but I wanted to do them. Um, and then and then I learned about this company, Morosco Forge, that makes this ice bath, filters the water, makes its own ice. I'm like, sold. And I've been using this now. I got it, I think it arrived in December. I ordered it like August and it took forever to arrive. But once it got here, I have not been able to stop getting in. And in 2022, I've been getting in every day. So don't let it intimidate you, May. It intimidates everybody. The best advice I can give you is just start somewhere. If it means at the end of your hot shower, you turn it down to warm, do that. Um, if you can go a little cooler, that's cool. Remember, your breath is what's gonna help you get through that. And any perceived pain that makes you say you could never do that, um, that's your brain. You're not in any physical danger. And if you get into cold and you can't breathe your way to calm yourself down, I would say practice breathing before you get into cold. We should all be able to you guys see me when I get in. That's the first thing I do. And it's, I will tell you, that first 10 seconds, it's all I can do to not scream because it's so overwhelming, especially 32 degree water. It's super intensely cold. And so you guys see my face. I'm literally struggling there in the first 10 seconds. And I'm, I'm really trying to calm my breathing down and slow it down. And that's so key. So maybe those of you that are reticent to getting into a, an ice bath or a cold shower or even a warm shower, practice the breathing. And when you learn how to breathe, then when you get into the ice bath, guess what? You already know how to calm yourself down. And it's invaluable to use your breath for that purpose. Conway is here. Heart and Soul says, wow, that's neat about your ice bathtub. Yeah, yeah. I, it's one of the reasons that I decided to go with the Morosco Forge is it makes its own ice. A, a bunch of nerdy engineers put it together. They live in Phoenix, Arizona, and they wanted to do ice baths year round. And during the summer, they would buy ice. And by the time they dumped it in there, it melted so fast, they didn't really get an ice bath. So so they came up with a way, they took some refrigeration parts off of freezers and things, uh, and they created this technology that makes its own ice. It's pretty glorious. Um, and it controls the temperature, so I can set it at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and it will get pretty close to that. If there's ice present, then it's close to 32 degrees. Um, and then it filtrates the water as well. So I've been getting in there now almost three months in a row now, 
um, and I have yet to change the water out. I have added water a few times, but I don't have to change the water because the filtration uh, system does that for me. But yeah, it's expensive. I will warn you, it's very expensive for the Morosco Forge. But for me, I saw it as an expense as uh, something preventing me from having to go to the doctor. Uh, so I saw it as an investment in myself. And don't you know, on my taxes, I am writing that thing off <laughs> as a health expense. Um, and it, it's a, it's a big ass health expense, but giving me health as well. May says, my sister recently told me to stand under cold shower to help with my headaches. I usually stand under hot shower. Haven't tried yet. Thanks for the encouragement. You're welcome. And, and May, look, I, I get it. It's intimidating. Um, uh, but I do think the breath work is going to be helpful for you. And if you need kind of a methodical breath, uh, breath work, a lot of people, they like to, That's what Jimmy likes to do, except a lot slower than that. There is this thing called four, seven, eight breathing, which may also help you where you breathe in for four seconds. Then you hold it for seven seconds and then you breathe out for eight seconds. And you do a few of those that also will relax your mind. There is also this very aggressive breathing pattern by this guy named Wim Hof. And it's pretty aggressive, so I would definitely try this outside of the cold. Uh, but it's like forcing as much air in as fast as possible and forcing it out as fast as possible. So <laughs> that's called Wim Hof. And so you do that kind of breathing. And some people get lightheaded, in, including Jimmy Moore. Um, so I don't do that kind of breathing, but a lot of people find that that helps them kind of have a warrior attitude about the cold. So good luck to you as you try this. And yeah, please come back and share your experiences. Daniela is here. Kira is here. Clyde is here. Yoser is here. So yeah, if you came in late, you guys here on day 77, I've been talking about the temperature changes that I've been seeing. So we're going to do a uh, body temp update here towards the end of this video. All right, see, down to 98 now. So remember, before I got on the air, 99.9 .9 degrees. Then after getting out of the ice bath, it was 98.9 .9 degrees. Then it went up to 99.4, came down to 99.8, and now it's 90, or 98, 98.8, and now it's 98 on the nose, okay? So that means I'm on my way to 97, and my body temperature, core body temperature is now dropping. And commensurate with this, I will get a very sleepy feeling here within the next hour. And that's how I go to sleep. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat. I like it. I like it a lot. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. As always, if you're watching the replay on Facebook, YouTube, or even here on Instagram, go follow me on Instagram at Livin Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. We do go uh, live at 5 p.m. every single day here in 2022. I'm trying to show people you go into an ice bath every day, you're not going to die. You're not going to die, I promise. You might be a little cray cray like Jimmy Moore, but you won't die. And so uh, come join the fun, ask your questions. I always love the interaction in the comments, so please leave a comment too. I'm happy to uh, happy to engage with you there. Anne is here, Smilerista is here. Marcus says, I think Wim Hof breathing will make your blood too alkaline. Well, I don't know about that, but all I know is it makes my brain too dizzy, so I don't do it myself, so. All right, guys, let me get out of here for now. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye, guys.